Welcome back, you beauties. Thank you so much for rejoining what promises to be the most motivational Monday ever. We want you to witness the triumph of the human spirit as we sit down with a South African para-athlete, adaptive sporting superstar, as I said earlier, Darren Thomas, who recently seized the bronze at the Waterpalooza CrossFit event in Miami in America. Mm. That's the fittest people in the world, bar none. And we're about to chat about the depths of his remarkable journey, navigating challenges and making history in the world of adaptive sports. Darren Brew, I think I've sent you so many DMs <laughs> over the years. <laughs> Brother Bear, so good to have you here. And congratulations. Show us that medal once again. Good to be here, yeah, thanks. Because that, that's Look got some that. meat on it. The nice chunky one, yeah. You've got to train just, just to be like able the... to lift a freaking medal, man. That's amazing, dude. Uh, at least it's worth something. It, it, feels, it feels like it's worth something. Oh, it it is, sure, bro. Dude, that, this is fantastic. Thank you very much for coming to share your story no, with us and just inspire me, everyone out there, man. It is a motivational Monday, and I think you're the perfect person to come and do it. Oh, thanks, um, we're going to get into this this festival that you took part, the Waterpalooza, in just a bit. But first and foremost, take us back. I want people to really understand where you come from. Um, that incident uh, that happened, what was it, 2007? 2007, yeah. Sure. What, what happened um, in that stage of your life? Uh, um... You know, I was at that stage. I was playing rugby. I was I was playing for line sevens. I was doing SA kickboxing. I was active and doing all the rest. Um, and then one night, it just took one night to change my life. For you know, um, there were seven guys that came into our family home. Uh, they broke in. Um, the guys, uh, the what they what they set up, and the guys stabbed me in the head with a screwdriver, and then shot me point blank in the chest. Uh, bullet missed my heart by a millimeter because as the bullet went past, my heart contracted. And then it hit my lung, ruptured my lung, and then hit the spine, and then the bone fragments went into the spinal cord, and that's what caused the damage. So I oh, am a T2, paraplegic, so from the chest down. And, um, yeah, I think uh, I had to go, to, uh, my dad had to rush me to hospital, um, and, uh, and then to operate on my lung. Um, and, uh, yeah, when I woke up in, in ICU and, uh, and kind of was told that you're never going to walk again, you know? Oh. And so, yeah, that's... Uh, Kind of any athlete's worst nightmare, you know, waiting to happen. Um, and when you hear that news, you don't want to believe it. You don't want to accept it, you know. Yeah. It, it's, it's beyond what most of us can think about. It kind of means that your brain's got to figure out some new neural pathways, literally, to be able to deal with that. Yeah. This, this incredible body only <laughs> follows the mind. Yeah. Something has to switch. And, and knowing the kind of person that you are, I think you were wired for that kind of switch, which mm. is amazing. But... This challenge must play out every single day. It never goes away. Yeah. Every day you've got to strengthen your mind. Did someone flick that switch for you? Was that switch always there? How did you handle that mental transition? How do you handle it? Because you're still in it. Yeah, I think for me, um, you know, I've always been a man of faith and, and just uh, that, that kind, of, kind of always kept me going. But having sport uh, and always having fitness in that, when this happened, um, I knew that I couldn't sit still. You know, it's for me, uh, training and sport has always been my therapy, and that's that's been where I go. You know, and so so I had to start moving again. Um, otherwise, you really lose your identity, and you kind of don't know who you are. But I think for me, just to get moving and just to feel that, you know, to get that blood pumping, and as they say, you know, exercise gives you endorphins. It and all does, that. It's yeah. a true story. You know, for me, uh, without that, I would have uh, I would have gone a di very different way. You know, yeah. for sure. Listen. I think the fact that you are here telling your story is is massive this morning because it just shows a lot of people out there that it just takes switching gears yeah. and look at it differently. And that is exactly what you've done. And you've reached incredible heights. And here you are with a bronze medal. We're talking Waterpalooza. Talk to us about this event, my friend, because, I mean, you, you said to me off air, this, this is bigger than you think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's massive. I think, uh, you know, for me, just hearing about it um, in the very beginning, they were the first guys to include all the adaptive athletes in, which was uh, what drew me in, you know, I thought. But it was like, it's something you speak about and it's not something you really go to, you yeah. know, unless <laughs> yeah. you're uh, really at the top. And for me, I mean, 16 years ago, my biggest challenge was trying to sit up in a lazy boy for five minutes without passing out. And, and we joked when I got to my CrossFit gym at CrossFit Juggernaut, I met uh, my, my coach there and, uh, and he was like, what do you want to do? And I said, oh, you know, I want to train and want to be competitive and maybe one day go to Waterpalooza and laugh, <laughs> laugh you know. And, uh, and when it actually happened, it was just, um, 
it's surreal, you know, just to be able to to go and 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 what, when we were there, just to take it in, because mm. when you're there, you just don't. It's so big, <laughs> yeah. and it's all the all the elite athletes, the top guys. You rubbing shoulders with them, training with them, and and I was up against the best adaptive athletes in the world. You know, some some guys who um, have a little bit more ability than me in terms of, uh, you know, it's a it's a seated division, so some of the guys could uh, have hip function and still move their legs and that. So it was a tough tough liner. Because um, there are layers, there are levels yep. to this game, dude, and I'm glad because you've kind of smashed through every ceiling here in South Africa. So I'm glad that the, a few more ceilings have now been set above you just because I think that's how you work, dude. You need something to go towards and to smash. Yeah. Um, and, that's, and we love it because we get to feed off that energy. And I'm going to say it very plainly, dude, because I think I messaged you on one of the darkest days that I was having after my back up and, and my kids were killing me, man. And you had said something about the relationship you have with your kids and what motivates you every day and how far you're willing to push yourself because of them. And that, that was a switch in me. And it was, yeah. it was a massive, oh, massive shift, you. bro. Yeah. A big, big thing for me. That being said, now that you know what adaptive sport can unlock in an athlete's world, in their mind, in their heart, what are your hopes for this sphere moving forward? Because now you're an advocate. You've proven what can happen if you invest. I think, I think the biggest thing is just that people for them to not to be scared to to get out there and do something, you know. There's a lot of guys that you see that are in chairs and, and they I, I guess they do some kind of fitness. There are a lot of guys who are fit and there's guys who do triathlons and things mm -hmm. like that. But just for CrossFit, I think people think, how do you do CrossFit in a chair, you know? Yeah. But you can, there's a way, you know? And I think <laughs> just being able to um, create that awareness for the guys and just, just to teach people whether they in wheelchairs or not, just to say, mm. you know, anything's possible, clearly. Because no when, when, when I, you know, when I thought my sporting accolades were all gone after this happened to me, and now, you know, I got bronze at Waterpalooza, for me, it's, it's my biggest sporting achievement. It's, a, it's, it's the top of a yeah. mountain. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, no, fantastic. Well done. Thank you Thank very you. much, man. And uh, yeah, we're going to keep a keen eye on you because I know you're not done yet. No, no. <laughs> you're not done yet. You can still climb higher mountains, my friend. But we want to experience a little bit of, of the workouts and how you go about it. So we've got Ryle. He's going to come here. We're going to give we you say the space. We, we yes. say we very loosely, yeah. yeah. i.e. Ryle. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it to Ryle. All right, yeah, man. Ryle, get in here, my friend. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He's quite meaty. I like this. Yeah, I'll take the honor. Be honest. Good luck, boy. The, the gents are definitely afraid. 